Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about 802.1x, identity-based networking. When 802.1x is enabled, only authentication traffic is allowed on switch ports until the host and user are authenticated. Authentication traffic is sending a username and password. When the user has entered a valid username and password, the switch port transitions to a normal access port in the relevant VLAN. So it's easier to explain this with a picture. So you see the diagram here. This gives us the terminology as well. Over on the left, we've got the user sitting on a PC. The PC is the supplicant in the 802.1x terminology. So the operating system on there needs to support 802.1x. All modern operating systems like Windows, Linux, etc., do support being an 802.1x supplicant. You're going to need to enable this in the operating system. The next step up, we have the access layer switch that the user is connected to. That is the authenticator. We need to configure 802.1x support on that access layer switch as well. The final part in the jigsaw that we have is the authentication server. If you use a server from Cisco, that could be the ACS, which is the older server, or the newer version is the ICE, the Identity Services Engine. So what happens with the 802.1x is the client plugs into the access layer switch. And at that point, they haven't authenticated yet. So at that point, they only get connectivity to the authentication server. They don't get access to anywhere else in the network. So it basically keeps them off the network until they authenticate. They then enter their username and password. The authenticator switch passes that information onto the authentication server and the authentication server will check that it is a valid username and password. The authentication server is typically also integrated itself with an Active Directory domain controller, which is where your user database is. Once the username and password has been authenticated, it's a valid username and password, that can be mapped to a VLAN as well. The authentication server can then send that information down to the authenticator switch and it will update the port that the client is plugged into with the correct VLAN. At that point, it acts just like a normal switch port in the correct VLAN and the user get their normal access to the network. So 802.1x, it's used to authenticate your users on the network. They don't get access to the network at all until they do put in a valid username and password. And at that point, they get given the relevant access for that particular user. Okay, that was our first three access layer switch security mechanisms. I'll see you in the next lecture for port security. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free, right now then you can enroll in my ccna gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description it also includes full study notes quizzes and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else